Hello my Soccer Universe for a review of match day 7 in Euro qualifying for Euro 2024 and we have our first officially qualified teams besides the host Germany of course. So kind of uh, there's a certain finality to it already however I think the qualified teams did not all come that as a surprise you know it is France it is Portugal who were running away with the group it was Belgium who got a big win in Austria which was also not quite unexpected but there were quite some interesting and rather big results as well and some groups are really coming down to the wire with two kind of biggish nations the Netherlands and the Italians two nations that I like the most uh, coincidentally are struggling are struggling at the at, at, at the moment um, I think they still have a way out don't get me wrong but the road is a tricky one that's for sure. I would say we go straight into uh, medias res uh, if you like and we'll start a uh, goal match day by match day um, and then go group by group in a way and I really want to start with Spain beating Scotland 2-0 because this was one of the bigger games I have to say uh, played in one of the worst stadiums uh, that can host a national team at the moment, uh, especially in a city that hell has two better stadiums for sure. That's the in, any, in, in any case, uh, it was the game that everyone kind of expected. Um, given other results, it was clear that Scotland just needed to get a point out, out of it. However, Scotland do not have the means to really hang with Spain, so they just need to keep it tight, try to get a draw out of it. Uh, Spain created a few chances, and whenever Spain has to play against a tight defense, they have problems as well. Uh, but Spain created chances, and again, uh, you look at the Moratas and, and, and the others who just cannot... Uh, pull it into the net and then the game almost took a really really big turn pro Scotland with McTominay getting a free kick and putting it from a very acute angle into the net big celebrations among the Scotland fans however uh, the goal was called off initially it was single there was a foul which honestly hmm, I'm not so sure if this was really I think then the Galga got, got right it wasn't offside why they, they were not giving it because uh, the player that was offside was clearly obstructing goalkeeper in a way. Uh, I think he had even a slight touch on and that usually should be then enough. But unfortunately that, that really nice goal was not allowed to stand. And then it came as it always comes. Uh, after such a sad setback it was especially Jesus Navas came on for Carvajal and Sunset came on. And those two were then the switch that Spain needed to uh, kind of push Navas uh, crosses in and Morata with a really nice finish makes it 1-0 and then Sunset had a little bit of a touch of an on goal uh, makes it 2-0 and so Scotland beaten for the first time in this qualifying campaign however you know they're still looking really 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 good um, of course Norway still have have a chance they got a big 4-0 win on Cyprus to kind of uh, solidify their third spot uh, with Sir Loth Holland of course going to an hour's nest but uh, that group is going definitely uh, now with that win uh, it is more that Spain and Scotland will go through and I think Norway will not have a big chance as we will see. Another big result happened in uh, Croatia where Turkey actually came really to play. They had a um, game was played in Osijek which is a really nice stadium. I think they should more play more often in Osijek instead of uh, in Zagreb. Uh, Turkey played really well the first half and fully deservedly took the lead. Yes, it was an Özkan uh, a white uh, punted ball and then a uh, goalie is kind of in no and Yilmaz uh, lobs it over him into the net. Uh, it's an avoidable goal, but the way Turkey have had played in the first half, they uh, every bit deserved this goal. However, on the flip side, Croatia then came pushing, uh, were really close to an equalizer, but in the end Turkey hang on. And that is a huge win for our Turkey that propels them even more into Germany uh, next summer. And Wales now have a chance to put Croatia on the back foot. So uh, watch that space. And then the third really, really huge result, Albania. You know, starting as a little bit of outsiders in that uh, group. They romped the Czechs 3-0. They had, had, had read the 1-0 lead in the ninth minute through Asani. Uh, and then it didn't help. The Kittil uh, was sent off for a second yellow card early in the first half. 
There was, um, and I think that uh, he handled the ball in, in, into the net. Uh, so he thought he had the E, the e equals no, you're getting uh, sand off. So this was basically where the game turned because I think his checks were having in, were hanging in there and probably could have gotten something out of it. It was 11 v 11. However, then it was all Albania with Seferi uh, scoring a brace and uh, even third goal. The, the, the set for all offset. Albania looking really good and Albania are on their way to the Euros very, very, very much so. And it's a country that I don't have yet in my collection, so I'm already on the look for Albania jerseys, if you would like. In the same group now, Poland have an outside chance, but they got it done in uh, Torsam. Szymanski and Buxa scoring the two, two goals to put Poland now in second place, but with a game more than the Czechs. But I think it will very much come down to the head-to-head -head between those two nations. Let's move over to the events on Friday. I actually want to start in Dublin, where Greece got a really, really good win. And there's a reason why I'm wearing Greece, because they are they made a, a huge jump uh, into qualification. They already had their playoff spot secured, but now they, have, uh, they can put real pressure on the Netherlands. And that win in Ireland was one of the uh, real big steps, st stepping stones there. And the two goals were really well worked with uh, Timikas uh, um, assisting uh, Giacomakis in the 2020th and then Pelkas to Masuras just before halftime. Another really nicely played goal. Um, and then Greece just needed to see it out. And yeah, as nice as those uh, Irish church uh, jerseys are, Greece are really, really good at this moment and are a definite, uh, uh, look like a definite challenger. I would even say in their playoff path, uh, they should be considered fav favorites of making it. Uh, the Dutch as I said, are in trouble because they're losing at home to France. Well, that came a little bit expected. Um, and you could see that, as I said in my short video, and you know I have short videos on all of these games, the difference was killing Mbappe. Uh, yes, the first goal was really uh, a really nice work. The attack over Griezmann, Gamke goes then out to Klaus. Who then cuts it in? I think it was Coman Griezmann out, out to close. Then cutting in and Mbappe uh, is there, gets a foot on it. It's more or less three really at the goalie. I still think this was an avoidable goal. The Dutch really try everything, but they don't have the uh, punch going forward. The, where is the time when the Dutch, with all of the great offensive prowess that the Dutch have, it's completely missing at, at the moment. I think they're more solid on the back than on the front, which is very, very un Dutch. Uh, definitely doesn't help that Ajax is also kind of in a funk. It's usually reflective uh, of things happening in the Netherlands. Um, and doing you know, France had to just see it out. And Mbappé just uh, early in the second half as well scores another and a really brilliant goal because the ball is on the bounce up and just hits it fully and it goes in a really pretty, pretty goal. Hartmann then gets a goal back. Yes, the RK had an equalizer that was then choked off for offside uh, correctly. So, so. There were chances there, but overall, France deserved that, that win by just being a little bit more ruthless. And France are now already qualified for the Euros next year. And they can cruise now, which actually might also not work in the favor of the Dutch, as we will see upcoming fixtures. And then the little matter of Austria against Belgium. Uh, it is so funny. If you look at how the goals were scored, Austria actually played really well with a makeshift squad. I mean, you not only have it Alaba and Anal, now, which probably the two biggest names missing. You had also um, uh, Posh being out. You had Gregoric, who is the main striker out. Many, many players out. It was a makeshift squad. And for that, you, it was not kind of all the pieces were fitting well together. But Austria played really well. Put Belgium under pressure, tried to avoid being caught on the counter counterattack, and did that for the most part. And you know, the Belgian attack, the, uh, you know, you have a Lukaku, you have a Doku in there, you have a Luke Bacchio. It's scary. And that's exactly what happened. Austria did not create many great chances, but they always had the pressure on Belgium. And with all the little chances, they either was the last pass missing or it was not very exact. They, those, those were, were the problems. Whereas Belgium get once in front of goal in the first half and score through Luca Bacchio, where it was just uh, the one-on-one. -on -one, uh, he was just better. And the shot, yeah, I still think a, a, a world-class goalie saves that one. And second half, yes, a same thing. Absolutely same thing that Austria had two quick chances and Belgium within three minutes absolutely ruthless. They were hit the crossbar through, Luk uh, through Lukaku and Luka Bakio. Uh, a doubly deflected shot makes it 2-0. 
that kind of was the game. And then Lukaku, uh, it was a two on five Austrian defenders and Lukaku still plows through 3-0. Game done at that moment. Absolutely done. However, it was not, not done because then there came some interesting changes. You know, you uh, uh, Kalajic and Mohamed Cham, especially who plays in France, uh, came on. Um, also Pras uh, for Weber. And suddenly Lima, it's a little bit, uh, he had not done not, not a great game. But for once, he didn't go for power. He went for exactness and puts it right on the post. In. One goal back. A few minutes later, Onana is sent off for a second red card. Game on. Then Belgium, uh, com uh, I think it was TRT, commits a handball in, in the box. It's one of those that I honestly don't like being called, but Sabitzer converts the penalty and it's really game, game on. However, Austria didn't create a great chance to equalize as well, although they tried, but it went for a try. And with that win, Belgium are also qualified. I think they were just absolutely 100% ruthless. Uh, it was a very similar game to what the uh, Dutch had against France. Austria had also against Bel Bel Belgium, but it, there is a different in class. And even though this Belgium team was missing at De Bruyne, for instance, uh, they were just a lot more class up front. So, sad to say, but that's what it was. And then we go to uh, the last group, I think it's Group J, um, where we had Iceland playing a 1-1 against Luxembourg, a game. Uh, it is so weird because at first it was all Iceland who got the goal through Oskarsson, uh, hit the post. And right after the half, Rodriguez, who just had come on, it was like within a minute, scores the equalizer. Then they hit the post and very late, late on, then Iceland tried to get the winner as well. It's a result that neither helps Iceland nor Luxembourg, or uh, really, despite Portugal beating Slovakia 3 2, I think a winner could have probably challenged Slovakia. But Slovakia looking uh, not that bad. That game, however, it was very one-sided, especially in the first half. It was only Ramos and Ronaldo scoring, but it should have been more. This could have been four at the half. Uh, Hanchko then gets a goal back uh, with a wickedly deflected shot, but immediately Cristiano um, re-establishes the two-goal lead. But Lobotka, actually a really nice shot, pro um, could probably be seen as the best goal of the evening. But especially what Portugal show showed in the first half, this is a scary Portugal team. And then we come to yesterday's action where Ukraine beat North Macedonia at home overall deserved. I think they even hit the cross. Masu Sulakov gets the early goal. The game was played in Prague in the Sparta sta Stadium. And it should have been 2-0 much so, so sooner. It was deep in stoppage. I mean, Kar Karavayev saw that the Macedonian goalie is way off his line. And he's out there on on, on the wing. And put, put in it. it was actually a really cool goal. I have, have to say, that result meant that Italy were already put under quite some pressure. Um, they get the expected win over Malta and actually looking good in the, in the process, I have to, have, have to say, but Italy have, have nice deep road ahead. Um, but I want to also mention, I did it already in my short video, uh, Jack bon Bonaventura becoming the oldest player for Italy that scores his first uh, goal at the age of 34, 30, 30, 35. It's great to see him play. Uh, Berardi gets two goals, uh, one just, just before the half, one after and then Fratesi deep in stoppage time makes it 4-0. But I think it was a routine performance for Italy. Where of course, we also need to say uh, two of my favorite players with Tonali and Zaniolo have been sent home because of their involvement in some illegal betting. Just take take it for, for, for what it is. I think this group will not come down to uh, Ukraine against Italy. Um, and Italy have an away game at England, as as we've seen, and a home game against North Macedonia. Uh, it's not the easiest route for, for, for the Italians. The weird group H, where I had again all the top four teams meeting each other, and now it tilts suddenly. I mean, the Finland had a chance, but now it really tilts to Slovenia and Denmark. Slovenia are... Uh, very convincingly beat uh, Finland 3-0. Seshka with a pet penalty and, and scoring a goal him himself and then very late on Jansa gets another one. There were more goals in there. I think uh, Finland was not really in play there. Finland probably not out of it as, as is Kazakhstan and Denmark get their revenge. Remember, they were tuned, tuned, tuned up in Astana when Kazakhstan turned that one around. Now they get a 3-1 uh, win. I think uh, it was uh, Skov and Wind scoring the goals. Um, and so Denmark and Slovenia look like the two teams that come out of this group and then probably one of the best games uh, in the entire break was Hungary's 2-1 win over Serbia. Um, Hungary taking a lead in 20 through Varga but um, Serbia threatening and creating chances 
Pavlovich heading and Iki Gretman immediately from that. It was a, a ball from Nego that bounces between Salai's uh, legs. He makes an, a turn and hits the bouncing ball with a wonderful shot. Great technique, internet, like uh, within a minute of the, e the e equalizer. It's a goal that you have to see to actually believe how this could have happened. And Hungary looked really strong, uh, especially in the first half. In the second half, Serbia scored two goals that were for a uh, fracture of sides not given. Then they managed to hit the post, I think, twice within one uh, action. They were really there for the taking in in, in, in a way and probably should have uh, gotten an equalizer. But Hungary on get a second win over Serbia. Hungary very much on the road to Germany. And so before we look at, at the standings, uh, here's just the winners and losers. I mean, Slovenia's win over uh, Finland was, was the biggest. Greece, huge win. Turkey, also huge win in Croatia and Albania. Uh, Poland keep themselves in the discussion as well. So those are the big, big, big winners. And the losers, of, of, of course, are their op opponents. Plus Wales, who now they really needed uh, Croatia to get some, so, so something against Turkey. But the Czechs, uh, suddenly they looked like they are safe. Suddenly it's shaky. Finland probably have spoiled the chances. The Netherlands have a hard road and as I said, Wales in there as well. So let's look at the overall standings. We have here Group A, Scotland and Spain looking more or less sad, as I said on. France is through, uh, also the favorites as we will see. And then it's between Greece and the Netherlands and they will meet rather, rather soon. Uh, England look also rather safe. Italy just edging Ukraine at the moment. Uh, but I, I think this could be a really, really, really tight one. Then we have Turkey now ahead of Croatia, even the expected thing. That, that was a huge win. Wales now need to get a result against Croatia, uh, which will level uh, kind of the table again. Albania look is strong. I think it's between Poland and the Czechs at this moment, with the Czechs holding a slight advantage thanks to a game in hand. Belgium are through, Austria uh, will do it as well, probably, or they need more or less two points. It's either a uh, loss for Sweden or a win for Austria, and I think that looks quite good there. Hungary and Serbia both are through, although it's now getting a little, little bit tighter. Uh, don't look at Bulgaria. It's, it's a real mess. Slovenia, Denmark, as I said, those two are the class of their respect, uh, of their, their group. I think now Finland and Karkas will have a hard time getting out of there, but they both have the back door with them. Um, uh, playoffs. We have not talked much about the Switzerland group because the Israel games, for political reasons, cannot happen at the moment. So this group is rather uneven. Uh, Switzerland still will probably qualify from that one. Then between Romania and Israel, um, and then the last one, Portugal through. It is seemingly a free for all between Slovakia, Luxembourg, and Bosnia. However, uh, none of them are really exciting teams, to be honest. Uh, it's and I think Slovakia will probably just edge it. You also see how the playoffs look more on the right side for the expected playoffs. This is likely to happen exactly this way. In the top one, I think it probably would be between Poland and Wales. Um, the middle one, that's a rather open one. I actually would favor Ukraine there. Um, but the Israel, Ukraine game really recent events. That's an uh, interesting match. In the bottom one, Greece should be considered the favorites uh, there. Upcoming matches, we have already read today, Norway, Spain is probably one that sticks out. I think that Wales, Croatia is a big one, uh, because should Wales beat Croatia and suddenly Croatia is looking into, oh, this could get tight. So watch out for uh, that one. Then we have Greece, Netherlands is a huge, huge one. Austria with a win and Azerbaijan could already get it done. Bel Belgium, Sweden sounds good, but Belgium is already qual uh, qualified and Sweden, yeah, they probably need, need a point to keep their hopes alive. And then, yeah, the last one is all England, Italy. I, I would say that's the standout fixture. Although Serbia, Montenegro, Montenegro beat, get something out of Serbia. Watch that one. Then Serbia could suddenly be in trouble. But other, other than that, I don't see it. But it's all England, Italy. As for the favorites, let's close out with that. France ahead of England. Spain now moving up because they edge closer to qualification. Germany uh, just hanging in there as well. Portugal, Belgium, Croatia, Netherlands, and Italy. Should they qualify, you see Netherlands, it. It, it, they have their, it's not at the 90s at the moment. So that was it from me. Let me know what you thought about the games uh, during the last three days. Which games are you going to watch now? Uh, who do you think of the big nations will not qual qualify? That would be interesting as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up. Enjoy this video. Subscribe to my channel. We'll see you more. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!